Hi there, Sandy here. Welcome to another polymer clay video at my YouTube channel and my blog, KeepsakeCrafts.net. Today is part two in a series on how to make this wildflower votive holder. You could certainly use these techniques to cover anything you like. In part one, I showed you how to make three types of foliage, and today I'm going to show you how to make two types of flowers. So the first flower we're going to make is one that looks sort of like a larkspur or salvia. So you just need some green clay, and in order to get a variety of greens, I've just taken some out of my scrap bin, and if I want to make it darker, I might mix in some brown or some black or gray, depending on what direction, or you could mix in whites just to get a whole variety of greens, just like in nature. So to make the larkspur flower, you just need to roll out a fairly thin stem. And it's a really good idea if you're trying to make something that sort of resembles actual flowers to have a picture in front of you. So these are the leaves that we made last time. So you just put your stem on there, have it come down close to the bottom, and then you can just break it off wherever you want it to end. We're starting with the tallest ones on the vase and we'll work down to the ones that are towards the bottom. So once you have a stem, you can just mix a color that you like. And if you look at pictures, these flowers come in lots of shades, of purples and pinks. Salvia is pretty close to this blue that I made with ultramarine blue and a little bit of white and purple. And what you want to do is have a lump of it and you want to squish it down really firmly onto your tile so it doesn't move around on you. And then you need a needle tool, and all you're going to do is rough up the clay with the needle tool and get these little crumbly bits. And then you just take them and place them along and try not to squish them. You may have to squish in a couple just to get that first affixed to your stem. And like I said, looking at pictures of the actual flower will help you to get the shape. I'm not trying to make exact representations, but I did want to make it look like something that is a real flower. So the salvia is just these long skinny triangles if you look at it from the side. This is why we want the clay stuck down to the tile firmly so you can go in there with your needle tool and rough it up and pull off chunks. And if you have to press a little hard with your needle tool, you can go back in and cover up that spot with another little scrap. And that's it. You just keep pulling off little pieces and building the shape of your flower. There are lots of flowers that have this look about them that you could use this very simple technique with the needle tool. And you might notice I didn't mix my clay 100%, so I have some variations in there which I think are very pretty and realistic looking. So you just keep going until you're happy with it. And that's how you make that kind of larkspur or salvia type of flower. So the next one we're going to make is tall phlox. I love tall phlox in the garden. And if you are familiar with the plant, it consists of a lot of little flowers, like a bundle of little flowers on a tall stem. So I've got another shade of green here for my stem. And these aren't quite as tall as the salvias, but of course you can make your garden however you like. And just kind of tap it down. You can actually squish that little last bit, that, that top bit in. And then if you look at pictures of phlox, they actually have these pairs of triangular leaves that come out along the stem. I'm not going to try to get that exactly, but I'm going to make four little triangular leaves. And what you need to do is just roll four tiny balls of clay, roll them into a bit of a cone, and then I like to take a piece of paper and just kind of squish them flat. If you do it from the wide end out, often that helps preserve your point. But don't worry about it if you don't. You can just take a razor blade and kind of get your point back. And then I'm going to take a needle tool and just gently make a center vein. And then use your blade to lift them up. And then use your needle tool to place two at the top of the stem. And then you can also use the needle tool to add a few veins, which helps flatten it onto your object. 
And then I'm going to place two more, another pair, just below those. There, I can kind of use my blade to fix that. Now to make the flowers. The toughest part of this whole process is actually making little tiny balls small enough. So I have a trick for you. Take whatever color you like for your flocks. You can Google pictures of them to see what colors they come in or make them whatever color you like. And you're going to roll a ball of clay maybe just a smidge larger than an eighth of an inch. Then roll that ball into about an inch and a quarter, an inch and an eighth long snake. And then I have this tool. It's called a Marksit and it's terrific for marking clay into equal size portions. So I'm going to use the smallest one here where each of these marks, these are three millimeters and about eight of these equals an inch and so you just press it down lightly and now each of those is marked and we're actually going to cut each of these in half. So you just use a razor blade and I usually cut along cut these little bitty pieces that seem impossibly small and you'll end up with about 16 to 20. If you don't have a mark set you can just cut this in half and then in quarters and then cut those pieces in half and then quarters until you have about 16 to 20 pieces and then you want to roll each of those little pieces into a tiny ball. Fold all my little bits of clay into balls and like I said from that one eighth inch ball you should end up with about 20 of these little bits. And now you just need a one eighth inch ball tool and if you lightly tap it to the clay, one of the clay balls, it should pick it up. And the best way I've found to do this is just put the ball in the palm of your hand and then gently press on it with the ball tool. You don't want to press too hard. You want to press on it just to make an indent and then you use your finger to lightly flick that off the ball tool onto your tray. I'll show you what happens if you press too hard. I mean, you can thin this out and make it pretty thin and wide, but then when you go to take it off the ball tool, it just kind of deforms. You could certainly use this technique for certain flowers, but for these we want to keep those nice little round bits. So that would be the next step, is just take all of your little balls, press them lightly with the ball tool, and then drop them onto your work surface. So now I've taken all my little balls and made them into these tiny little cup shapes. And now we'll put them together into a phlox flower. So what you want to start with is four or five of these. Use a needle tool to pick them up and then place them in a row along the top pair of leaves that you added. Remember that nothing is going to stay, even though it's sticky now, after it's baked, it all has to be stuck together. So everything has to be touching something else firmly enough to stay. So there's a row of four, and then I'll do a row of three above that. And it's okay if some of them fold over, if you look at a phlox flower, that's kind of how they're shaped. And we're going for kind of a dome shape here. Again, take a look at photos of tall phlox flowers. And you just build your shape. And you want the cup side up. These all seem to like to land cup side down. And then you just keep adding them until it's a shape that you like. Each one, like I said, takes anywhere from 16 to 20 of these to get a nice full flower. You can go back in, add some more along the bottom if it looks a little thin. But the way I like to do it is to first get my shape and then I'll go back in and add more as it seems like it needs it. And sometimes you end up squashing them with the needle tool when you add them, so you just put one over there. And that just makes it look more full. And there you have it. Isn't that sweet? And here's my candle holder with the salvia and the tall phlox added to it. I may go back later and add more, but for now I'm thinking this looks pretty nice. 
And you can see you can kind of tilt them a little bit in one direction or the other. And notice I tried to connect stems and flowers and leaves with other parts of the sculpture so that when it bakes, they'll all be connected. So for a list of the tools and materials used in this project, you can click here to go to the accompanying blog post. Here's another look at the project that we're working on. I hope that you like this idea and that you'll give some little tiny polymer clay flowers a try. It really is a lot of fun to do. Be sure to check back next week for part three when I'll show you how to add some more flowers to your piece. In the meantime, happy creating. Thanks so much for watching Keepsake Crafts videos. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and share. And if you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, make sure you do so you don't miss anything. I upload every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. You can follow me on Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, and on my blog. Bye-bye.